Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black. And welcome to my part one of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister trial version. This game is coming out on May 26th, and the trial version came out on April 14th, about two weeks ago. Right during SakuraCon, how unfair was that? I was at a convention and this demo was out and I wasn't playing it. Anyway. Let's just jump into this because there's a lot to get into. First, when you start the game, you get these options. The lower five aren't available in the trial version, so you get difficulty, normal or hard. We're going to go with normal. Obviously, we get voice acting in this game, unlike my last Let's Play. This is Fia, she's a goddess. And she's welcoming us to the trial version. She is such a goofy girl. She literally does a sound test in this one. But earlier she was talking about, this is a trial version, you can pre-play the game. And because it's a trial version and the game hasn't come out, they, they still might change some things, and so much and so on. Oh, here we go, here we go. We get a choice. Start the trial version or return to the title screen. Man, I am overwhelmed by the choices this is giving us. Yeah, she tells us to enjoy and she says we'll see her again at the end of the trial. Oh boy, backstory. Okay, we're going into a world where two worlds were a long time ago merged into one, now called Dilrithina. A long time ago, there was a three gods war. You know what, I'm going to go in and turn off the narration because it's really going to slow me down. Hell, I'll probably turn off more as it goes on. Anyway, the humans came from one of the worlds that got merged and the elves and demi-humans came from another world that got merged. The human world had the old gods the elf world had the new gods, and during the war, the humans created the the artificial gods, we'll call them, and those three god groups got into a war. The artificial gods were lost, and the present gods from the elves won the war. So the humans and the demi-humans got along and all that good stuff. The arts that were used to create the artificial gods were sealed away by the present gods, however. And the present gods basically set the rules for this new world order. So magic and things like that is possible. And the gods, all these gods, the present gods, live in the world with the humans and stuff too and compete for the faith of the faithful. Oh, this is an important plot image. Sear it into your mind. So, in this world, we're going to be working on the continent Raubashu 
in the western area of the northwest part the western region of the northwest area of the continent called Thiaspia. It's pretty specific about the locations because several Eoshuli's games end up, well, are set in various areas of this. Ah. In this area, a powerful god from the elves is the one called Theushia. There is one kingdom under Fiesia's umbrella, so to speak. And that is the kingdom called Infru's Kingdom. So this kingdom is fairly faithful to Fiesia and stuff like that. Anyway, what we're dealing with now is one person who starts off the plot, sort of. Don't even know if he starts it himself or whether he's just accidentally in the wrong place at the wrong time. But let's meet this guy. Prelude chapter, the presently Awoken Goddess. Yeah, guess who the main character is? This is Avaro Lucruel. And he's investigating some ruins. These ruins were recently uncovered in a landslide in Infru's kingdom. And he's been hired to come and check it out. He is absolutely geeking out on the writing he finds on everything. Now, from my last Let's Play, I obviously translated almost every single text box, but there is just way too many in this game. Check it out, hot babe. So we've introduced Avaro. That is the knight that's in charge of this expedition into the ruins. So this knight can't read anything that is written on the walls. She's a bit impressed. Avaro geeks out on it some more. He does offer to teach her some of it, if he has the opportunity. <laughs> I think he's just, she's just being polite by saying she'd do it if she had the chance. But she wants to remind him that the work is further in. And he needs to get to work because he's been hired to you know, work. Now, Avaro is an engineer. At least that's how I'm going to translate it. We're going to call an engineer a mechanic who can use magic. Which separates him from the other mechanics around here. Speak of the devil. This is a mechanic. Mechanics are pretty common, but engineers are pretty rare. And these two ugly bastards round out the rest of this expedition, as far as I can tell. It doesn't really rule out that there are other Engineers that nobody really bothers talking to, but these are the ones you end up seeing. So blah blah blah. They talk about why Avaro came along on this. Oh, 
Ooh, I eat it up. Guess what? You guys are getting turned off now, too. I'm not sure what that is, but I'll turn it off anyway. Ah, uh, let's see. We're talking about Avaro and how he came to be employed here. He's been a wanderer between all the kingdoms and nations, and he just happened to wander into Infurus at the time when this was uncovered, so he hired himself out to recover emplacements that are found within the ruins. Turns out there's a lot of emplacements down here. Like the entire ruins is just filled with them. He thought this would be a short job, like one day or two days, but it's not gonna end that easily. But he's kind of glad that he gets to hold a job for more than, I don't know, one or two days is, is, was his expectation. Avaro has a bit of a problem settling down because he's a half-elf. The elves don't like him because he's not a full elf and the humans don't I wouldn't say they don't like him, but they're a little suspicious. Infurus Kingdom is actually a pretty good place for him because they are more willing than other places to take him on his merits rather than his bloodline. Ah, Avaro's goal here is to get his own workshop, and the fat guy makes fun of him for it. But he is a half-elf, he's got that much. He's got a bit of ability going for him. And he yanks this guy's chain just for the fun of it. Anyway, they all get along anyway. They talk about going out for drinks afterwards and picking up chicks. Everybody likes hot chicks. Oh yeah, yeah we do. We're all agreed here. But the night tells us that we should be quieting down. It's not because she was overhearing the conversation and getting offended either. It's because here in the ruins there might be monsters, and while this area is safe, if we start laughing too loud, it might attract them. Shows what she knows. This is a role-playing game. The thing that summons monsters is plot-relevant revelations. Alright, we've arrived at our work location. Let's get to work. All right, Boltzard is willing to give us a tutorial on how to do things. Screw this guy, I'm your tutorial, YouTube. All right, starting out, this is the admission screen. This here is how you win, this here is how you lose. In this one, it's easy. If you don't stick around for 30 turns, you win. Or rather, if you get these broken emplacements fixed before the 30 turns runs out, you win. Now by default, turns end whenever your last character moves, but I turn that off as soon as I can. It's a, an RPG, you explore, you steal things. Avaro here can move three spaces a turn in control areas. But he can only move one space into unknown areas or uncontrolled areas. On this map, you're only going to be dealing with controlled areas, though. Yes. This thing I activated is a deployment point. They look different in Kamidori if you've played that. 
Well, they also look different in Himegari. Shut up, Avaro. Anyway, for, you can go into deployment points and come out the next turn with a bit more of your fatigue spell points and hit points recovered. So I, as a rule, go into them every chance I get unless I need to defend them. The question mark meant there was a gathering point where you could gather, typically you get herbs here, but you get things like dirt from those kind of things. There are also the mining points which have a different graphic. Now we fixed all the emplacements, sort of. But we're not done yet. Now we learn about one of Arvaro's abilities. Let's see. Right there between the first and second plus marks is Tansa, which allows him to find hidden passageways, like this one. In addition, this skill here, it's the engineer skill, I'll call it, has those four abilities above all added together. The third one is going to come in this turn, and it allows us to unlock chests. Not every character can unlock chests, just like not every character can find hidden passageways. If I wanted to stop here at the White Feather, it would refill all of my stats. But we're almost done and we know don't actually need a stat refill. And that's the last emplacement and we're done. Now in the mission screen it had these different conditions, where if you pass the conditions you get the rewards. This is clear the map, and for it you get two ores. You remember that gather point? The herbs place? This is what we got there. Dirt, dry grass, and green grass. How nice, green grass. Well, it's the beginning of the game. You get the crap to start with. Oops. So the old guy's done as well. As a half elf and an engineer, I've always got a bit of a advantage down here, as he can sense magic better than humans can. Hey. <laughs> And the night declares a break for the people who are done with their work for the moment. So she wants us resting so we don't wear ourselves out too early. So what's up with these emplacements? Avaro asks. I've been fixing them, but what do they do? We don't know. Now the other engineers go, no. For that matter, the knight who's overseeing the work doesn't know. Probably. She's just been ordered as well to come down here and direct us doing it. So if we want to know what they do, we just have to fix them all and then activate them. Probably a doomsday device, you know. Now we talk briefly about the night, as if she isn't like 20 feet away or something. So she's been wandering around the nations, kind of like Avaro has, and settled down in Infurus for a while. She's employed by Infurus Kingdom, whereas uh, she seems to have a kind of permanent position, whereas Avaro seems to have a temporary position, but that really doesn't matter. Influence Kingdom is the 
kingdom with the largest area in this region. And like I've said before, this is fairly congenial for half elves to be living in, which is why he's decided to come here and try and set up a workshop. I've always wondered kind of out loud here what he needs to do to win the favor of the Introduce Kingdom. So the old guy talks about the kingdom's god, Fiusia. Remember that guy from the intro? So we talk about him, and the old guy just spouts out that in the north area of the kingdom, there's a holy ground called Shinkyo no Sanro. Do you remember that image in the intro I told you to burn into your mind? That's the place, I think. Anyway, that's holy ground up in the north. It's really dangerous. You can hardly walk for all the wind and there's monsters and all that crap. All kinds of a mess down there. Now how this is relevant? Anybody's guess the old guy just decided to talk about it. So Varro wonders whether he can level up far enough to be able to survive in there and get the approval of the god. Yeah, well, forget that, dumbass. Not only is it dangerous, it's also forbidden for us to go in there. Well, why didn't you start with that? Hmm, well. Well, this is a stunning plot revelation. How do we know it's a stunning plot revelation? We know it's a stunning plot revelation because the monsters start coming now. Come on, man, you weigh like 400 pounds. Don't go asking for help from the knight just because she's a knight. Ah, uh, Ah, anyway. I don't need to keep listening to you now. But she's a faithful retainer. Boy, she's reliable. She's ordering us all out and not to enter into the ruins again until she comes back. But Avaro is too dumb to do that. He's going to stay behind with her. <laughs> so he's an engineer, and obviously engineers wield giant wrenches. He also sees this as kind of an opportunity to win some brownie points with the kingdom. Or something. Oh, well, she objects because it's her job. And he just decides not to back down, so she eventually accepts it. Yeah, he's not leaving no matter what she does, so she's stuck with it. Oh, the knight will introduce herself now. Her name is Kisnir Kaguri. You know, I thought about doing voiceovers for Havaro. 
Oh, she's offering us a, tut a tutorial. No, I'm your U tutorial, YouTube. You don't need hers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Must have been something I ate. Okay. In this one, our goal is to defeat all the monsters in the region. We need to do it before 30 turns are up, and if Avaro falls, we lose. So here's the mission criteria. Again, when we clear it, we get three wood. No, two wood. I can't count. So I spoke a bit about control. This bat controls most of this room, so we can only move one square at a time inside of it. All right, battle time. The animations have really improved in this game. When we beat enemies, most of the time we get something like this. This is bat fangs. So, while it's staying still for us, let's explain everything you see back there. This first one is the attack power and Havaro's defense power, accuracy, speed, and critical rate. It's mirrored over here. To calculate damage, basically you take the attacker's damage minus the defender's defense, and that's the number of points of damage they deal. There are exceptions, special abilities in particular. The critical rate is a percentage, so he'll get a critical 5% of the time, and the bats will get zero. That's typically calculated by taking the luck of the two characters. And whoever's higher gets that many percent in critical hit rate. So if, say, Avaro's luck is 10, and the bats were 5, it would wind up like this. Accuracy is based on your weapon. Ah, now we can get to see why Kisner needed our help. Because of this number of enemies you have to fight. She's just level 13 with an attack of 24. She'll definitely be getting a lot out of our level 1 character with an attack of 8. Seriously though, if she could cross this gap here, she could wipe the entire place. This is uncrossable area for both of our characters. And that's the only reason why we're useful in this map at all. Now... <clears throat> Here you can see a blue number with a... with the green kanji here. The green just means that it's a lightning-based attack. The blue means that Avaro is a little bit weak against lightning-based attacks. Wait, could be... I could have that backwards. I'll check his stats once I get a chance. And this here lets you go into quick attack mode. Much faster. Don't miss Avaro. I need you to be hitting things. Okay. Things to look at. First, yes, Avaro is actually at a minus three disadvantage when fighting a lightning-based attacks, taking lightning-based attacks. So he's not actually very good against these. I also want to point out, he's been hit by two status effects, kind of. The first status effect is paralysis. It lowers, its, lowers his movement speed by one. The second one is charge. He gets that once every time he uses a normal attack. It lasts forever, and once he gets three of them, he can la launch a special attack.
Don't you like how Kisnu is just wiping the floor with everything she touches? Ah, since we build up the recharge, let's use the charge attack. It changes our attack right here. Adds three to it and lowers our speed by one. But our speed was pretty well screwed anyway. Hmm. Hmm, what the hell happened here? I was thinking that it was all messed up, and now I'd look at it, it's all zeros. Odd. Hopefully that won't mess with my recording too much, but odds are good it did. I apologize. So, Avaro is hurting. And he's a little bit paralyzed. But there have been cases where he's... I've had to deal with cases where he's stuck moving one square per, t per turn until the paralysis runs out. So, he's hurting in the way of hit HP, so I'm going to take him over the feather and re recover his ass. Are you excited? You should be excited. Because if you've been paying attention, you realize that Havaru is close to a level up. Hmm, this isn't com as convenient as the first time I tried, but... I'm going to show you a bit about the saves coming in this game. Probably they're going to attack me. I will probably win. And I get this level up. 1 HP, 1 fatigue point, and 1 defense. Now don't you think it would be nice if we could get better stats out of that? All right, let's give it a shot. The monsters usually do the same thing every time, but there is some randomity to their movements. Oh, look at that. It's all the same. How unfortunate. We can conclude from this that every time we load, it'll be the same level up. But I'm going to throw a wrench in this. Ha <laughs> ha, I can't believe I said that. Anyway. Now I'm going to wait a turn and then attack these guys. And it's different. If you end turn, it quasi-randomizes this. If this is like Kamidori, at least. If you want a true randomization, however, you have to exit a map and enter another map, and then it will truly randomize the random number generator for this. But, if you're just doing casual saves coming, if you save, end the turn, and then kill the enemies on the next turn, it should be random enough for your purposes. I'm not really attached to anything I'm getting out of these. Hmm, now that he's leveled up, he's getting a little less experience from these guys. I'm positively addicting to finding everything. Well, if you've ever played an RPG, you've probably done it too. Charge attack! Ouch. But I get first strike and I... Hit 95% of the time, so probably I won't die. That was a bit harsh. Alright. Stage completed, we get... Two woods. Oh, now in addition to dry grass and green grass, we get... Withered grass. Don't you love beginning new RPGs? 
So everything turned out well. Now all we need to do is head out and check on the others. Hmm. There's definitely something wrong with the volume on my end. Well, let's just keep going. Kissinger is wishing that we had not actually fought with her. It kind of stayed within our duties, as it were. And she asks if we're hurt or not. But we're all right, yes. And then she turns around and thanks us. She has this kind of duty thing where she has to say what she, what her duty is, but she's actually kind of glad if you're there for her. That, that kind of story, I guess. And now Alvaro introduces himself to her. So we, now we head back to the entrance and meet up with everybody. And if everything's all right, we go back to work. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Hey, it occurs to me that investigating ruins that were exposed in a landslide might not be the best idea. Alright, I'm with you. Let's get the hell out of here. So, Avaro falls down somewhere. Down and down and down. Basically bashing himself up real good in the process. Until we reach somewhere. And that will end us for part one of this Let's Play. See you next time, YouTube.